Rush Duel is a fast-paced spin-off game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where you can summon as many monsters as you want and draw up to 5 cards each turn. In this series, me and the Dr. Alex progress through each Rush Duel product release and build decks with whatever cards were available at that time. We have been drafting characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime and have exclusive access to those characters' boss monsters, and will continue to draft characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush series. Join us as we continue to battle it out in this series, Rush Duel Character Draft. Dark Matter of Phantoms was released August 10th, 2024, and introduces a new way to fusion summon in Contact Fusion, which lets you return fusion material back to the deck from the field and doesn't require a fusion spell card. Since I drafted heroes, I'll receive Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman, Elemental Hero Pulse Neos, Elemental Hero Heat Neos, and Rising Hero Tantalum. Since I have Asaka, I'll also receive Heavy Infantry Cavalry Bill Dragon and Demolition Emperor Blast Kaiser. Since Alex drafted the Darkman, Zuijo, and the Dark Meister, he will receive Dark Matter Requiem, Dark Matter Requiem Omega, Dark Matter Enigmite Geodiver, Dark Matter Mist, Dark Matter Dragon, and Dark Matter Emperor Dragon. Since Alex drafted Velvelgia CPT, he will receive Burst Bunny and Cyber Spice Queen Tumeric. Finally, Alex will receive Hyperdrive Barrier Tail. Heartless Hound Martial Master Prime Sheba, Meteor Swarm Entry Dragon, Cyber Osteus, and Plandolin a la mode. So this is the deck we're bringing to today's game, and this is Berry Fresh. So Berry Fresh is a very intricate kind of aggro combo deck, I guess. It's very interesting to play. We have played a couple of test games of this, and it is a little bit taxing to play i guess just it's not overly complicated but i do feel it is a step up from a lot of the other rush decks that are available right now the gist of the deck is that every monster is level 1 100 attack 500 defense aqua and a lot of the effects do basically specify that if we use something that has 500 defense or 100 attack or is a level 1 etc etc we do get kind of bonuses to those effects or we need to use them as costs now the downside is a lot of the cards in this deck do require us to send other cards from the field or hand to the graveyard which can cost quite a lot. So for example, we have Berry Fresh Happiness Harvest. This kind of acts as the main boss of the deck. And this card lets us send up to two other cards from our hand or field to the graveyard. So sending two cards is quite expensive, but this card will gain attack equal to the number of cards sent times 1500. So it goes up to 3100. We get out our field spell that becomes 4100. So our cards can still get really big. And a lot of our cards do have a little secondary effect that says they gain 1500 attack, gain 1500 attack gain 1500 attack so although these cards do look quite weak a lot of them do actually have a decent attack value especially during your turn some of these attack boosts will linger during the opponent's turn some of them will not but basically this deck is all about trying to just make a big board pick your opponent's board apart by using things like happiness to pop back row changing defense position monsters to attack mode with something like pleasure reducing our opponent's attack with something like shy and then having a lot of consistency cards such as rich and artless to try and just Fill up our hands so that we can use our effects. So two other weird cards we are playing is Parakeet because this can just plus us, which can be really important in this deck. We're also playing Lumiere because again, a lot of the time we're not going to have good ways to deal with high attack monsters. And this card at one copy, we can't really brick on it. So we'll just slap it down, put it back into our deck, get rid of a threat and then keep playing from there. We do also have some of the really powerful meta staples like Jest of the Cosmos Princess, which is just so unbelievably powerful. And we're playing the new trap, Berry Fresh Swimming, which does let us destroy all monsters on the field that are not 500 original defense, which is pretty good. We're feeling pretty good about this deck. I've seen this deck performing very, very well in tournaments, but I think the weakness of this deck is going to be my brain. Can we pilot this as well as we need to without really having spent much time with the deck? But if we can, I think this should be a pretty easy win. If we can't, we're probably going to get dumpstered. But let's fire into the games and see what Alex has got for us. So last week we had pure elemental heroes versus cyber spice and it was a bit of a slaughter. The cyber spice deck 
easily managed to outmaneuver my hero deck. I felt like every time I had any kind of play, you had seemingly the perfect way to interrupt it, to stop it, and then come back with a even better play of your own. And again, you were doing the direct attacking with your bunny boss, and that was surprisingly effective. Uh, I, the, like, the only other time I think we've really seen direct attack be a big part of a game plan was the Gaia deck when Battle Ruler is able to attack directly. But even then, I feel like most of the time you'd pop back row anyway because falling into a trap just doesn't seem worth it uh, rather than like potentially getting in a chunk of damage. But it'd be interesting to see if direct attacking does become more normalized going forward in Rush because we we're always looking for ways to beat set three pass, right? And direct attacking has always kind of been around. It's always just been kind of rare, right? There aren't that many cards that do have the ability to attack directly. But maybe we'll see more going forward. As for this week, we still have a couple of decks each, I think, still knocking about. I don't think it's going to be super easy to predict what each other's going to be on. I don't know, maybe, maybe it will. I personally think that you are going to be on some sort of dragon deck. And I think what would make sense would be that it'd be a red eyes deck, because I think you still have got a red eyes boss monster, but... You know, it's always in that kind of red eyes, summon skull type of area where it's all kind of one deck, but you can kind of build it in lots of different ways. And some of the bosses need summon skull and some of them need red eyes and different cards can change their names. So I think it's going to be something in that kind of area. Okay. You got any idea of what you think I'm going to be on? Uh, I'm going to guess very fresh. Very fresh. Okay. Okay. Well, there was a couple of other decks as well in my pool, but very fresh is obviously, you know, brand new. I will say, Berry Fresh is a weird deck just because it reminds me a little bit of the Love deck in that it's like a bunch of kind of low attack monsters that can gain attack. Uh, and I, yeah. uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that kind of card personally. Now, I think I did end up performing quite well on the Love deck, but I'm a very simple man. I like very simple decks. And when it's a deck that does require a bit of like finesse to play i'm not necessarily against it but it's never gonna be my first choice let's put it that way but okay. let's uh let's jump in and see what we're both on all right i will be going first let's see what we can manage here unfortunately this hand is actually kind of pants so we are just going to set a bunch of cards and pass Okay. Bluetooth Burst Dragon. Okay. Did we actually get any new Bluetooth specific cards? Uh, no, there was a new Hyperdrive Machine boss at uh, low level. It's also a machine. Uh, is there a reason to try and save this card? Alright, we will do this. We will activate Magic Cylinder here. Arguably, that was a mistake, but we will see. All right, we'll flip up my Berry Fresh Happiness Harvest. And we're going to flip up my Berry Fresh Pleasure. So, I can activate Pleasure. And I can send this to the graveyard. And I can change one of your monster's battle position. So, I'm going to flip this up. And then I gain a thousand attack. Then... We'll go ahead and activate Mazeful Charity, which will let me draw two cards and then put a card from my hand on the bottom of the deck. I think we want to use that effect. don't think we need this. Then we'll activate another copy of Mazeful Charity. I need this. We'll get rid of that. Normal Summon Chemispet Parakeet, which you should be familiar with. Oh, okay. uh, unfortunately, I can't use its effect. But what I can do is normal summon berry fresh happiness harvest and using its effect during the main phase as couples normal or special summon i can send up to two other cards from my hand or field to the graveyard then gain attack each to the number of cards sent to the graveyard to meet the requirement times 1500 to the end of your turn then if i have five more aquatype monsters in my graveyard this card can't be destroyed by spell slash trap effects until the end of your turn it will activate its effect and i'm gonna send okay we'll send this and then we'll go up to 31. we're gonna activate jest of the cosmo princess and I'm going to send all three of these to the graveyard. And then I'm going to pop just the one, I think. 
this gives me the draws. Uh, these draws are okay. Uh, actually, these draws might actually be entirely ideal. The problem I'm seeing with these cards is all of them require me to send other things to the graveyard. Now, they do, they are nice enough to say hand or field, but it does make it a little bit awkward. Activate Strawberry Sweet Generis, which will let me pop a monster with 1500 less attack on the field. Then I can special summon an aqua type monster with 100 attack from my graveyard. So I'm going to pop this. Then I can bring back a card. Now, I have some pretty cool cards in the graveyard. The issue is, is one of them says send an aqua type card from my hand to the graveyard. One of them says send a card from my hand to the graveyard. And one of them says send two cards from my hand or field to the graveyard. I don't really want to be giving up resources. So I'm going to take the only card that doesn't give up cards. And I'm going to summon out Berry Fresh Artless, who actually lets me increase the number of cards I've got. So now, using its effect, I can either send itself to the graveyard and bring back Harvest, but Harvest puts me again in a situation where I'd have to give up cards to do anything with it. So instead, I'm going to take Happiness. Then I'm going to Normal Summon Pleasure. Activate Pleasure's effect. Let me send this to the grave to flip this up. Then I can Normal Summon Happiness and then activate my field spell, Berry Fresh Garden, which is, while it's in the field spell, face Aqua Monsters with 500 original defense on the turn player's turn, gain 1,000 attack. Aha. Uh -huh. And I think, because your guy is nice and squishy, that is going to be the game. And that, mate, that took, that took too much brain power for me. I am, I am, I am Unga Bunga. <laughs> Alright, I, I summon monsters with 2,500 attack, and then if they pierce or something, I'm like, that is a good monster. This deck, already, I'm like, no, there's too many options, bro. There's... And everything has a cost, and it's like, you have to try and balance out, like, summon a guy that can activate its effect, and then get an extra card, then send that to the graveyard. No, it was it was kind of fun, so far. I mean, it's only game one, but, oh man, I have stressing my brain more than usual playing this deck, put it that way. Okay. Oh, oh, hand empty. Okay. Uh, three back row is always going to be terrifying. We're going to start with Chemist Pet Parakeet. So if I have no other monsters in my field, I can reveal a Pyro, Aqua, or Thunder from my hand. Then the top three cards of my deck to the graveyard. Then I can add to my hand one Pyro, Aqua, or Thunder monster among the cards sent with the same level as the monster revealed. Now, fortunately, almost every monster in my deck is level one. So I can activate this, reveal that I have Cure in my hand, and then we just mill three, and if there's a level one, we can add it to our hand. So I can either add Shy, which has a continuous effect to reduce your monster's attack, which doesn't do a ton here. Or I can take Harvest, who has a very heavy cost to use the effect, but is quite strong. Shy is good because it's a continuous effect that will weaken your monsters during your turn, which is super nice. But it's still just going to be a 100 attack guy, especially right now. Taking Harvest, I think, is too many resources. And it doesn't realistically do anything from this position. I think we are going to take Shy. Then I'm going to normal summon my Berry Fresh Cure. So I can activate its effect to send a card from my hand or field to the graveyard, and then it gains 1500 attack until the end of your next. No, yeah, your, your turn. Then I can add Garden or Swimming from my graveyard to my hand. So I'm going to discard this Swimming and then add it back to my hand. So you know I have a swimming now, which is a pretty cool trap card. When your opponent normal or special summons a monster with 1500 or less attack face up, while you have a face up aqua type monster with 100 original attack, I get to destroy all face up monsters on the field, except monsters with 500 original defense. Oh. Which is, yeah, that's pretty good. I think we do do this. So we will summon out Berry Fresh Cure, we'll activate its effect, and I'm going to send Parakeet to the graveyard just to gain some attack and to clear a little bit of room. And then I think the play is going to be summon out Happiness, activate its effect to send the Shy that we added, and then we can pop one of your back row. We'll go ahead and pop this one. Then we'll set. Could be anything. And then we'll start trying to get in for some attacks. Uh, yeah. Ooh. 
Okay, so that should be 16 in, which is quite nice. Well, you know what my back crew is. Now the question is, can you play around it? <laughs> Dipper 7, okay. Discarding Barrier Tail. Hmm. Fortunately, I think the decision of which one to attack here is quite easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's start with everyone's favorite pot of greed. Let's see if this gets us going. All right, we're going to activate Jest of the Cosmo Princess again. So I'm going to send these three cards to the grave. And then we're going to pop... Did we pop Barrier Tail? Right now, I don't really have a good way to deal. Oh, I can't pop Barrier Tail. <laughs> I need to remember, I'm not allowed to pop Barrier Tail. Uh, if you have a face-up dragon type, I can pop Barrier Tail. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Leaving Barrier Tail in attack mode means potentially I could maybe attack over it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So I think we're going to go Barrier Tail and a back row. Then I get to draw two cards, which is always nice. We'll normal summon out Happiness again. Activate its effect. And I will send Shy to the graveyard to pop the back row. Okay, Cylinder gone. That's pretty big. Then I will go ahead and activate my garden. We'll activate cure. Yeah, we'll send the other cure. Which makes room for Abyss Soldier. Unfortunately, I don't have any hand to discard. But we can just get a battle phase. We will swing. Then we will swing. And we'll get for 26. And we will pass. Mm -hmm. We'll ship 7. Is this is this the moment where we use swimming because <laughs> like i don't know i really don't know if there's going to be another opportunity is the issue but arguably this ends up being really good for you anyway because you'll get to it'll pop my own abyss soldier if i use swimming oh no your guy has 500 defense oh that is so annoying <laughs> yeah that is, <laughs> that is so annoying <laughs> Pop your Abyss Soldier for no, no benefit. <laughs> okay, so all my guys get reduced. Only for the main phase. He's only uh... to be comboed with Bluetooth. Which is why I was like, do I pop this now? Because you could just set a monster and then tribute out Bluetooth and I have no opportunity to use swimming. But he just so happens to have 500 defense. Oh, I could pop this guy though. And my own guy. So the Totti Kazi to the graveyard, then this turn shoots two tributes to the tribute summon of a dragon mach or machine type monster. Uh, I'm genuinely debating if activating my trap here is worth it. There'll be two of mine for one of yours, but yours is kind of two. Alright, sod it, we're gonna do it. We're gonna activate this. Okay. Tribute two, summon that screwdriver. Oh, and Mirage Dragon. Yeah, that's pretty big. Okay, so we are going to lose our board, but you don't have a ton remaining. So maybe we'll be fine. Uh, that is a very funny draw. Our hand is, is, is in such a way that there is physically only one order to do things, so we don't actually have to do a lot of thinking here. So I'm going to special summon XQT Lumiere. Oh my god. <laughs> So I can shuffle this card in the face at level 7 8 monster back into the deck. So I'm going to activate its effect. So it has to be itself, and it has to be Screwdriver. So they're gone. That's step one of the plan. Then we'll summon out Parakeet. We're going to activate Parakeet effect. I will reveal that I have this level 1 Rich in my hand. Then I can add a card to hand, and it has to be Artless Rich or Pleasure. Pleasure is like, it's not bad. I'd have to give up a card, but I could change your guy to Defense Mode. Um, like that's not awful. The only issue is because he's got 600, even if I kept this parakeet around, I still couldn't even use parakeet to get over it to try and get more damage in, so that doesn't really do anything. Rich also doesn't do a ton for me, so I think it's probably just Artless. Yeah, we'll take Artless. Then we're going to normal summon the Artless, and then we're going to go ahead and activate Mazeful Charity. We'll draw two. I really don't need that. 
Then I can activate Artless's effect, which will let me get Happiness Harvest. And because I stick Happiness Harvest, as it sends itself to the graveyard. Then we'll normal summon out Artless again, activate its effect, and this time we're just going to take, we'll just take Happiness. Then we will summon out Harvest, activate its effect, and I'll go ahead and send both of these to the graveyard to gain some attack. And then I can just normal summon these two. Set this, go to battle, and I believe this is a huge okay. chunk of damage. Oh, man, this, this berry deck is, it's too... It's not even like hyper com uh, like complicated. It's just compared to like a lot of the other rush decks that we have. It's an extra step up of like complicated, I guess. Like its complexity is just a lot higher. Hmm. Five cards straight out of the gate. I guess we always activate Pot of Greed, even though I'm not sure how aggressive I can actually get with this hand. If I do, like these, I have two cards in my hand that kind of contradict each other right now, which does make things very difficult. We'll normal summon Parakeet, activate the effect, and I will reveal to you that I have pleasure in my hand. Then, happiness is coming. Blind it good. I don't think Artless is going to accomplish anything right now, so we'll just go for this. Then we will go ahead and summon out the happiness, activate its effect, we'll discard Shy, and we'll pop one of your back row. Then I'm going to normal summon out Pleasure, activate its effect, send Parakeet. Ah, uh, that's right. I don't get to change your battle position. I mean, that's. Fine, I just wanted my cake and eat it too, so we'll activate happiness, we'll send another shy, and I can pop another back row. Then we'll just go battle and see if 316s are enough. Could be. But you just have like triple clayman set and I'm just like, no. <laughs> then we'll pass on that. I wonder if anyone's done that yet. Someone must have thought of the idea of just like, I'm gonna put like all of the magnet warriors and just like claymans in the deck just to be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds We've already seen Cycliptron in, in Duel Links seeing a lot of play just for having a 1500 but It's just sort of the weakness of the berry deck, right? Is a. Uh, have to end with 200 attack monsters. <laughs> well, you can mill two for the sake of milling two. Okay, so we get to keep a happiness, which I guess is kind of nice. Ow. have we drawn? Okay, we will normal summon Artless. We're going to activate its effect. We're going to grab back happiness. Then I can activate Jest and send these three cards to the bin. I think we always get rid of Barrier here and probably just a back row. Look, I always, always forget about that. Uh, so we'll draw two because we did pop a card. So that is at least something. Uh, we'll go maze for here. We'll send that. Then we'll go ahead and normal summon pleasure. Activate pleasure. We will send this and then change a monster's battle position. Now the question is, can I actually beat 16? I can gain 15. Uh, on like both of my guys can gain 15. But... Your guy has 16 defense, which is like exactly the worst number for me here. Makes me just feel like there's no point in changing his battle position, so I'm going to flip this up. Activate happiness, and we'll discard Artless, and we will pop the last back row. Then we can activate Strawberry Sweet Generis, and we can pop your Light Wave. Oh, for God's sake. Ah! <coughs> No. <laughs> Barrier Tails does no. Uh, what does this say? If you have a face-up dragon type monster on your field, face-up dragons and machines cannot be destroyed. So I could not pop anything on your field either way. Okay. 
don't get to do the second part of the effect because I can't destroy anything. Or we'll just attack over these and pass. God, Barrier Tail is so good, man. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> got three more back to chew through now as well. <laughs> God, not being able to pop cards makes this so difficult for me. Yeah. Right, we're going to normal summon Happiness Harvest. We're going to activate Mazeful. We'll send this. We're going to normal summon Cure. Activate Cure's effect. We're going to send Swimming. And then get Swimming back. Then I can normal summon Shy, which will weaken your monster's attack. And then I'm going to set, set, go straight to battle. It will try and clear this. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I guess we activate. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so the attacking monster loses 1600 attack until the end of this turn. And then if we return two different types to meet the requirement, we can destroy a face at level nine or lower monster. Okay. Um, well, attack, I guess. I haven't really got any other option. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good way to play around Magic Cylinder, though. Only got 100 attack monsters. Nothing matters. The thing is, you know what my trap card is. And we both know it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the plus side, you're nice and weak. Four now. Hit for seven. For seven, we dig in for a second boss by the look of this. But behold, magic cylinder! <laughs> I don't know if this will actually help me in the long run, but oh, that's actually kind of a good draw. We'll activate our field spell, which means we now have multiple ways to try and attack over Barrier Tail. Whether or not they will actually work is still up for debate. So I'll summon out Pleasure. We're going to go ahead and activate Pleasure. And I'm going to discard Rich. I'm going to flip this up. Then I'm going to set this. Go straight to battle. Uh, so now you can pop one of my guys. You probably have Cylinder back there as well. I'm expecting a cylinder and a bumper. Don't really see a great way to play around any of it. So we're just going to swing with this. We have the cylinder. This is where it gets used. Then, yes, we attack with this. Because if you have the bumper, you probably want to pop shy. But now if you want to stop the attack, you've got to pop harvest. Okay. Well, that makes me sad. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 500 life points in a dream. Oh my god, and I still don't think you've one. Just find a blue tooth yeah. or a red boot. Uh, you have... I don't know, it wasn't normal or special. I was going to say, you have a 600 burn card on the field, but it doesn't work because of two different reasons right now. And alas, my two back row are both swimming, which destroy monsters! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, we, uh, we got to see what these decks this could do. Uh, <laughs> uh, Alright, so, alright, let's, let's start with your deck. I think we'll start with your deck. So your deck is, I mean, it's cool, right? Obviously, it's a fusion deck. They didn't really get the fusion, right? We, we, we saw a lot of Dragon Burst fusion. We did not see it activated. Um, it was just consistently set on the field and popped, which is a little bit sad. But, what we did learn is, Barrier Tail is really good against specific cards, right? Being able to summon out Tributing is really, really good. Its stat line isn't the best because it only has 24, not that 2500 attack, but 24 is still not bad. It inflicts Piercing, which is always going to be really, really nice, and offers protection to your other dragons and machines, which is just really good. In, like, a lot of the cards in my deck specifically 
have to pop cards. And you basically say, no, you can't pop my cards. Which, again, in some matchups is going to be a lot more valuable than others. But here specifically was very, very, very strong. Uh, your other hyperdrive cards, I mean, the hyperdrive cards in general are like, they're just pretty good. Like, they're not busted. They're not crazy. They're not super weak. They're just kind of in that, like, they're decent. They're fine kind of kind of place. And I think that's 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 good. The yeah. flip side, my cards are... Oh, man, they are so weird, right? Everything has 100 attack. Everything has 500 defense. Everything's level 1. So what that does mean is the deck doesn't actually brick that often. The only way to really brick in this deck is to just see, like, five spell traps. Other than that, we can't brick on high levels. Shy, as we saw, is extremely powerful, being able to reduce the attack of all of your monsters and defense as well, by the way, by 1,500, which is really, really good. Happiness Harvest is kind of the finisher for the deck and can be really, really good, but does require a high resource investment of basically two other cards. But I guess if you think of it like treating this like a boss monster, you would normally have to summon two cards and tribute them to get this out anyway. So getting out a 3,100 attack monster that can't be popped by spell traps is pretty good. Mm. Then a lot of the other cards just have so much combo potential. I think the thing that really makes this deck stand out for me is that we're able to send cards from hand or field because of a lot of the costs rather than just hand, which means we can make room. We can summon out a guy, use its effect, send it to the graveyard, make room to summon something else, and then keep the combos going and going and going, which is very nice like it feels like that's almost what the dark matter deck is lacking the dark matter deck is very good at doing its combos it's, it's got some very very strong cards but it tends to like fill up its board with set cards and then goes okay but now what do i do um with the addition of level seven and higher monsters that deck now feels a lot better because we can just tribute over and make room but we still find ourselves in a situation with that deck where we end up with a bunch of set cards and we kind of don't want to have the set cards. Like, we want the set cards to activate some of our effects and then we want the set cards to go away so we can actually attack directly sort of thing. Which can get a little bit resource heavy. Another thing we also did see from both of us was Jest of the Cosmo Princess. And I think this card is... Oh, this card is a bit scary. I'm getting vibes from this card of, like, a lot of the previous staples that we've seen. And where it destroys cards rather than just, you know, like we had like Legend Strike, right? Legend Strike obviously was a meta defining staple for a long, 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 long time. It still does see play even now, but it did take quite a long time for it to get hit. This is a card that can destroy mm. monsters as well as back row. And I think as weeks go on, we're going to start seeing this card see more and more play. Whether or not we actually play it in this series is up for debate because some decks will probably like it, some decks won't. But tournaments going forward, I would not be surprised if people are just playing play sets of this card and just about everything except some very select decks this definitely does seem like an extremely powerful staple for rush and i would expect this card to get hit just because it seems a little bit too good i don't know i don't know if you have any opinions on it oh no yeah it is totally <laughs> way too good it seems <sighs> unlimited. Like, if this came out as part of an archetype right if this was like locked to a certain type or something like especially if it was a weaker type I'd be kind of fine with it, but so because it's just so generic, it's so so good. I don't, I don't, I don't know what Konami's thinking with this card. We'll have to see what they decide going forward. But these games were pretty fun. Thanks for playing, and GG. GG.